you guys already know what I'm doing here today. It's one color coloring book time again. And today we've got green. Hey people, it's Temi if you're new here. You already know it's green's turn today. I'm using the M Strong coloring book as usual. Let's pick our greens. I'm going into my massive 320 Ohuhu set as usual. And all of the greens on this watch card. I'm quite surprised how many greens we have but I can't see any on any other swatch card. And looking through this bottom middle section, I'm just grabbing everything that screams green, but I'm also comparing it to the swatch card because some of them are definitely leaning more blue than green green. But you know, green is made from blue and yellow. So just depending on what hue you actually settle on, it can lean one way or the other. Now I'm just paying attention to everything that has a G prefix. And here are all the greens that we have. Like I said, this is a massive, massive selection. I was not expecting this many. Barely fits in my big pot. So I've just split it into these two parts and let's pick our illustration. This is the coloring book I'm using today. It's the M Drawings Flower Girls coloring book. I've linked it down below with all the other supplies I use in this video. But before we find one for today, here is our lady from last time. She is stunning. I'm sorry, but this might have to be one of my faves. One of my big, big faves. So I'm going to name her Scarlet Ruby. I had so many awesome suggestions from you guys. So thank you. But this is definitely my favorite for this beauty. But now let's pick our lady for today. I'm going straight into the thumbnail page and honestly I just love how this page is coming together I cannot wait to see all of the monochromatic pieces on the page but for our green illustration I'm feeling this bottom right one green is such a down-to-earth color it can represent growth new beginnings you know bringing life into things abundance but it can also represent envy and jealousy like that evil side is that not what they did with buttercup bright greens give me energy vibrancy while olive greens relates more to nature like i love the shade of green that i've got on today in fact this is actually the only green thing i own <laughs> i don't know why i just don't wear green I need to change that. But darker greens, on the other hand, give stability, wealth, you know, affluence. So there are many different directions we can take our lady today. At the moment, it's giving me more of like a nature kind of vibe, but I really don't know. So let's play around with the thumbnail page. The first thing I'm going to do is to put a piece of card to lean on because if you have any experience with alcohol markers, you know they always bleed through and the paper isn't that thick. So I just need to protect the next page with this piece of card and going straight into the coloring. I'm envisioning this light skin tone for our lady today. But I want to do something a little bit experimental. I want to try to achieve a backlit kind of look. And if you were here when I did my pink lady, Rosalind Sakura, you know that was a headache. So to try it again, I'm going in with this slightly darker color and now I think I've gone too dark. So this is a great thing about the tester page. I know that for the real thing, I can hold it back a little bit, but I definitely want to work on this backlit shadow on her left side to try to achieve a realistic look. But anyway, let's move on to the flowers. If you've watched any of my coloring book videos, you know I try to vary the different hues and tones I've got all over the page just to make it all balanced. So I'm starting with the brightest green, using that for these two flowers. I'm also trying to use the same shade at different bits of the page, again, just to keep it balanced. Now, you already know I don't know my flowers. And honestly, at this point, it's somewhat embarrassing because how many of these videos have I done? But for this big, big flower, I want to keep it kind of light. So I'm going in with just small, small shadowing, you know, just to accentuate it a little bit. And now for the background, I'm really feeling the vibe of a dark green, like a dark foresty green. I just love that vibe. I think it will make some of the lighter flowers really stand out. And I think it would also be great contrast against her light skin. And now that that's done, I can come back in with the greens with some of the other flowers around the page. So going in with this lemony kind of green. And maybe I'll need some darker green flowers. 
but this one feels like it's building a little bit too much into the background so might have to revisit that later and for the hair i'm feeling like doing this blonde kind of moment so really light just small small shadowing under this cute bandana for her top typically i would leave it plain but i'm just feeling like doing this botanical kind of pattern i think this pattern is so cute just the white base background and the dark green i'm trying this shade of green for the leaves but again it's looking too dark against the background so honestly i don't know and you have to stay tuned to the end to see how it turns out i'm feeling like what if she has a matching kind of bandana top moment I'm not gonna lie, I don't like it. I really don't like it. So here's what the thumbnail page is looking like at the moment. Clearly there will be a lot of changes, so let's see how it goes. Speaking of all these greens, one thing you might not know about me yet is that I'm a plant mom. And I know a lot of parents are like, I don't have a favorite child, I don't have a tree. This is my favorite plant. And I have a bunch of others around my house. But I never grew up having plants, so everything has really just been trial and error for me. So because of that, I stay forgetting to water my plants. <laughs> But that's where our sponsor today, Planter, comes in. The app uses an intelligent care schedule to let you know when to water, when to fertilize, when to repot, even misting and cleaning. I did not know that was a thing. It is so easy to add your plants on the app. There's a plant identification feature. So if you're not sure what plant you have, you can just get a picture of it. And oh my gosh, I always thought this was a Monstera Deliciosa plant until I was adding it in the app. And I was thinking, this is looking a bit different from my plant. And lo and behold, it's a monkey mask and I never would have known. The app gives so much useful information when it comes to plant care. Like my silver inch plant, she's been going through it. <laughs> when I was doing up art travels abroad, who was watering my plants? Nobody. And it was through the app that I realized the positioning isn't great. It's getting too much light. There's a tool called Dr. Planter that helps you with whatever issues you might have with a plant, but also a treatment plan. This new year, I'm getting more and more into my nature bag. Definitely want more plants around my office. And Planter is giving me great recommendations. So if you want to check out Planter, click the link in my description box and use the code TEMI20 to get 20% off. Thank you Planter for sponsoring this video and now let's get to the colouring. Honestly, I'm scared for this colouring and it's so funny because I received a comment recently that was like, girl, why are you always nervous in all your videos? I hate to be the one to break it to you, but even for a professional artist like myself, it still takes so much anxiety before I can pick up my paintbrush, pick up my colouring pencils, pick up my markers to create art. It's so interesting because I hope it turns out good in the end, but I can just never see the finish line while I'm at the start line and the same is the case today. The thumbnail page has given me a taster of what it could look like but I'm still not very confident with some of the decisions I made there to be confident about the outcome of this colouring page. But let me start with what I know. I'm going to start by colouring the face. I always start with the face. I feel like when I get her face, her skin looking correct, everything else just kind of blends into the background literally. So I've started with the lightest base colour and going straight in with the medium color but already it's feeling too dark and this is where i kind of started doubting myself i feel like my strokes are very hesitant today and i'm immediately going in with the first color to try to use it to blend but one thing about alcohol markers is that it typically dries lighter than how it first appears and so because of that when you first apply it it's gonna be looking crazy and you're gonna be regretting your life but actually when it dries lighter, it just ends up kind of blending into each other, especially if you're layering on the markers while it's wet. And by that, I mean, as soon as you apply one color, you're applying the next color. You're not waiting for the layers to dry in between. So you can see that it's looking a bit crazy now, but when we come back to it, you see that it just kind of oxidizes okay. Let's move on to the neck, chest and body. And again, I'm starting with the base color, the same color I used on the face. And now I'm trying to imagine what a backlit kind of look could look like. So the shadows are more on the right side of the page. And again, the color disparity is gonna look crazy at the moment, but it slowly oxidizes to make it kind of blend into each other. But I'm doing the same thing for the shadows on the hands. And then I'm going in with one final deeper color that's gonna capture the darkest shadows. Also, against a white background, everything is going to be looking crazy and dark. But you see that the more I go in with other colours, the more everything starts to balance out. But moving on to the flowers, 
starting with the brightest green ones that I have and slowly going deeper to darken it. And I'm doing the exact same thing for its corresponding flower at the other side of the page. I haven't even gotten to the darkest darkest greens on the page but her skin and the shadows I initially applied does not look that crazy anymore. Now moving on to this big big flower and it might be my favourite kind of flower so maybe I should learn the name. Is it a peony? I just love the softness it exudes. So starting with the lightest greens and then going in with a slightly darker green just to deepen it slightly but leaving the white areas and you already know I'll be back with a white pen a lot later but for this one I definitely want to keep it mostly white from the get go. And for the remaining flowers I'm really just trying to experiment not trying to make them mimic any realistic flowers. I'm just using the different colours to add different patterns. Just sometimes just layering on it wet so that it kind of blends into each other. And then some other times leaving it to dry for a bit and then coming back. But I'm really in my experimentation bag right now. And now it is background time. I'm using washi tape all around the edges to give myself a nice straight edge so that I can fill in the background of the image with no issues. And I'm also overlapping some of the flowers and plants, which creates a really nice effect in the end. I'm going for the same deep dark green for the background and ah, oh, I just love, I just love, I just love. I think this green is absolutely stunning and like I said earlier, the contrast is contrasting. It's even making some of these flowers I haven't coloured in yet look amazing just in the white. Maybe I should leave some white in the end, but I'm loving this shade for the background. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. As usual, I say using the bullet nib side. So clearly I want to sleep here. And honestly, my hands always hurt after I'm done with the background. I always have to take a break. And people usually ask me how long these coloring book videos take to film. And for the main coloring page, I would say that it takes maybe six to 10 hours, six, eight hours, depending on the video. Some of them require more detail than others. Some of them have way more flowers in the background than others. So it really depends. If you've seen all of my coloring videos, let me know down in the comments, which one do you think took the longest time? I know which one comes to mind for me, but let me know down in the comments, which one do you think? Now that the background is all colored in, I'm taking off the washi tape to see what we're left with and see what I was saying about some of the flowers and floral pattern overlapping the background. I think it's just such a nice look. And also see how compared to earlier, our lady was looking like I went too hard on her contour, but actually everything kind of looks right in context now. And now for the remaining flowers. So I'm staying experimenting. If you remember from the thumbnail page, I had this one very dark but obviously that blended in a little bit too much of the background. So I'm starting with a lighter color and then going gradually darker with some of the detail. And also, by the way, I still use references with this coloring book videos. I try to reference flowers in general. And for this green page, I definitely try to find green flowers, but green flowers are not that common. So it was very difficult. And a lot of it really was just guesswork for me. And now for the leaves, I've kept it off for too long and it's time to finally tackle them. So I'm starting with this light color and you might be thinking, tell me what are you doing? Trust the process. And then I'm going in with this kind of medium shade for just small, small detail, really just the actual contours and lines in the leaves. And this is really where I was going to leave it, but it's just looking a little bit crap, isn't it? So now I'm going in with a deep color that's actually deeper than the background to add the final, final darkest points, the final darkest details. And I think it worked so amazingly well, this blend. With markers, 
you have to go gradually darker each time so i couldn't have started with the darkest colors and then added the lighter ones on top of it i had to do this three-step layering process and i think it works out so well for this leaf effect for the hair i'm doing the same thing i did with the thumbnail page i'm trying to create the illusion of blonde hair and obviously the hair is very much green i'm only using green markers but i'm slowly bringing in small small shadowing coming from the root and then leaving some of the highlight points white just to give it the ombre kind of effect And now we're finally approaching the finish line. I'm doing the same botanical print pattern for her top. I think it works really well for the top. Definitely did not want to leave it white. After I've got the pattern down, I'm using one of the lightest greens I have just to add some small, small creasing to the top. And I think it just works out amazingly. Also trying to put, you know, a little bit of shadowing because again, the backlit thing, I've not forgotten about it but I don't want it too dark that it's kind of blending into her skin so I really like this effect that I've got going on for her scarf I really hated the print I did on the thumbnail page sorry <laughs> I'm glad I tested it out there to know that it was not coming here so I'm just using the same color for small spray shadowing small small creasing and now it's my favorite time of all time it is the white pen stage I don't have too much I want to use it for on this page so just small small details small small detail and here is what our green lady is looking like here is how she turned out I think she turned out absolutely stunning if you're familiar with my channel you know I'm not a big green fan for the fact that that's the only green dress I own I am not a big green fan however i really love how our lady turned out so let me know what we should name her down in the comments shout out to my patrons i love you guys so much thank you for supporting me use code temi20 on planter and since you liked this video you will love this one where i tried urban sketching for the first time i went abroad with art supplies in hand attempting to fill a sketchbook